Like Eddie, fantastic year you've had, play some proper golf, you know, talking That's through. an unusual shaped hat you've got there, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. Straight out of the gate. It's quite an unusual shaped hat, that, isn't it? I won't put your name for one, then. I won't. No. I won't have to hide any other trucks. It's, like, it's like trucker's hat, that. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Keep, well, the American route's in there. <laughs> All right. Talk us through the bag, Eddie. What's, uh, what is, what's been behaving, what hasn't been behaving, what's changed, what has, what's gone on through the year since you've been playing? Um, so, first off, how, actually, long, how, long, how long have you had ours in, in four now? You've been in a year or so? Uh, over a year now. Um, there has actually been quite a bit of change this year going on because the start of the year, so last year I used the 900s, JPX 900s, right, with the Dynamic Gold X100 shafts. Mm -hmm. Great. This year, I um, wanted to have an option where my ball flight was up a bit, especially at the start of the year in the warmer climate. So I went to the AMTs, okay. um, but in the 900 heads. Yeah. Played the start of the year, won in Qatar with those. Played in a bit of breeze and they were a little spinny for me. So I said to Alex, I'd like an option where I'm kind of in between the X100s, which were slightly lower launch, slightly lower spin than yeah. the AMTs, which were higher launch, higher spin. So then we came up with the S Taper mm -hmm. 130. That was kind of in between. And then quite recently stuck the 919, JPX 919s in. So there's actually been a fair bit of chopping and changing going on this year. Although, I, you know, I wouldn't say chopping and changing. I would say it's just tinkering. Fine tuning would be the better way to describe it, I think. Yeah. The good thing is the heads still feel great. Obviously, um, the look, the look I would say, has improved even, which I love the look of the 900s. But testing was positive, so... Uh, they went straight in. They did, really. What I what I like about the look of the 919 as opposed to the um, 900s, right? There was a there was a bit more sharpness to it, right? It's a bit like looking at Brad Pitt's jawline as opposed to say. Mine. No, Matt's got a good jawline. Just a poor choice of hat. Yeah. But Matt's got a good jawline. It'd be a bit like my jawline, a bit clumsy. You know, let myself go a bit. Not that the 900s were clumsy, lovely. These are just a bit more refined, you know, and and I think the look was instant. Felt a fraction harder off the face, a fraction harder, but still great, obviously. And 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 I haven't really no, I can't say I've noticed too much the centre of um, mass changing in the head. I can't say I've picked up on that, but um, I like the back back finish looks. Taking away the blue, do you know what I mean? Now the blue is obviously quite iconic with Mizuno, but just having this whole area look clean, clean and, and sexy looking. Mm, it is. Uh, are you on? Are you on Twitter? I I go on Twitter occasionally. Um, I will find out through Twitter, or yeah, or I might go up to one of the guys and say, "What's on the horizon?" You know, what was what's on the horizon, and you'll say, and uh, you know, never. It's usually that way around as opposed to the other way around, um, which is fine. Listen, I'm not one of these guys who's particularly fussed or fussy over my equipment. You know, I'm interested in the new stuff, but. Uh, I'm not 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 a golf geek in that sense, but um, my my golfing career would last as long as my 14 clubs. So I wouldn't ever change. It would be a reparation. It would be when can I for when do I want to repair a club, right? Not change a club. And if I didn't want to repair, then once the 14 have gone, that's it. My career is over. So um, fortunately, you know, we're spoiled out here, obviously. And although this year I'm contributing 50 pounds for every broken club towards the Mizuno Christmas fund. So uh, <laughs> at the moment, I don't know what we're up to. We're a few at the hundred. moment we're in Seafair. Yeah. <laughs> at the moment we're, uh, um, no, I mean, yeah. For, I mean, listen, I'm one of these lucky kids that I've never had, to, I haven't had to pay for a golf club since I was ever actually, because I had a dad who paid for it. And then I was a good kid and a, a junior wise in terms of playing and a good amateur and I was always provided stuff. So I'm, at, I'm one of those spoiled, yeah, that was actually um, Jamie, who caddies out here now. He was he was a coach of mine. He was one of my first coaches, and I was ten in that photo. And I used his um, bag. He, he was used to play Mizuno, and yeah, I used that in the photo for the Oxford Mail years ago. Yeah, so I always remember that. Very busy down the bottom side there. Eddie, what's what's going on wedge wise? Is this a is this a change for this week? Is this a, an overhaul completely? What's what's going on? I almost always play with four wedges. Uh, pitch and wedge, 51 degrees gap wedge, 55 degree sound wedge and a 59 degree lob wedge. Very, very rarely will I play with three wedges, but in case I do, I have a 53 wedge in for that. So I'd go pitching wedge, 53, 59. 
So is that to, is that to look after something at the end, other end of the bag? Is that? I prefer to have more options at the wedge end of the bag because A, I don't go for many par fives. So I like to have lots of wedge opportunities to make my birdies there. Also, if you've got a tough par four and you hit a bad tee shot, you can pitch out and gives you more opportunity to still make your four. So I like to feel like I've always got a, um, a great, a, a, a good shot or a good chance from 140 yards inwards, which I do with four wedges. There isn't really a yardage I can never have where I'm kind of a bit stuck or having to manufacture. Yeah, Whereas yeah. with three wedges, I experience that. So um, that's why I have four wedges, five wedges in the bag, but only four that I'd probably use. So uh, yeah. The good thing I've had going on the last 18 months with my swing is I've had only two or three swing feelings. So it's gotten a lot better at not having that restart feeling. So swing feels, I live off them. It's like it's my blood really, it's my lifeblood out there on the golf course. So I like to keep them consistent and feeling fresh and you know, I'm, I'm ingrained in it all the time. So definitely, but last week was quite interesting because it was so windy, cold, didn't really feel like I swung that well. You know, you could turn up to a week like this and you, you kind of, you'd be fo I'd be focusing much more on my basics, fundamentals, making sure that everything is in a good spot so that come Tuesday, Wednesday, when I begin to find my feet a little more um, with, my, with my game, say, or my feelings that they're coming into the right, they're coming on, they're going to go in on top of the right foundation, so. When you are facing, when, you, when we were in Scotland last week and it is very, very windy, do you, do you consciously find yourself doing different things to try and... I, I get, my bad habit anyway is I tend to get really, uh, I swing down and left. So when I get windy days, um, it gets worse and worse and worse. And as the week goes on, it's like I, I just can't stop myself. You know, it's like that black hole just pulling me in. I yeah, just it's, it's almost a swing pressure sometimes, isn't it? It yeah. is. And then when you come yeah. to something like this, it's almost like a reset. Exactly. You can go right. Yeah. So I'm trying to stay somewhere as best I can on the... The scale on the neutral side of it um but that requires some you know focus and thought obviously on the technique and yeah I'd, I'd have to spend an hour or so doing that um for sure but i could do that in my hotel room you know i like i utilize my hotel room all the time i have a couple of drills that i do i don't need to be hitting balls in fact the more balls i hit the worse i tend to play um it's me it's about focusing on the really basic stuff because i don't forget i'm not going to forget how to swing a golf club i mean i've played this game so long um just doing it in them from the right position, right? Do you know very early on in the week, like how you're swinging it and how it's feeling on range? Is it, you get an indication? Yeah, and I've gotten, again, better and better at doing that because I've lived off the same types of feels. Um, so I can already feel that this isn't right. Um, yeah, I'm struggling to get the club working correctly up the line. Um, the path will be a little high, so I'll be swinging a little too far left and then the club face has to open you know then you're bringing in the volatility with that to find the perfect golf shot is it, you know are you searching so when you, when you stand in the first few swings when you come to a tournament like this is it are you gauging what you're feeling within yourself or are you gauging the ball flight um the well i can feel in myself how it feels obviously with my setup and posture and weight in my feet how comfortable do i feel the wind throws all that so it becomes harder and then yeah the strike and then the strike and then obviously the ball's going to tell me everything. So for me personally, uh, I play my best when I can start the ball right more frequently and if anything, draw it. When I start getting a little too high on the path, everything always starts left and then I'm, I'm, I'm starting to panic then. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to, yeah, just live off that and, and, and work on that really. Um, it'll be a thing for me, it's a, it's a path thing, but also, it's a club face thing as well. So it's just, you know, identifying what needs to improve. Almost always with me, my path, I lose my path first, it seems. And then the club face from there. I, I don't have much trouble getting the club face back. For me, it's how can I get my swing direction better in a, in a better way? And then I'll be pretty much on it. When does it come apparent where you go, like you have done, I want to try something a little bit different. Is that me or is that my, my tools? I think, um, the one thing I've changed over the last year and a half more so is I've flattened my clubs. So if I was really struggling, um, it would maybe be the case that I would come to you and say, right, I want, I want to get my clubs super flat because I've got this swing feeling and pattern going on, which is really not reacting well with a club head that's slightly more upright. Flatten it off, it's going to help my, it's going to help my flight a little bit. But other than that, 
I'm just trying to fix it all myself. And yeah, I, I don't, you know, if, if, ever, if everything's, well, obviously everything's set up pretty well with this club and it's all pretty much there. If the bad shots are going to be because of me, right? Yeah. So, but there is ways obviously of helping you a little bit. Now that matched up really nice. So I have two swing feelings, which I'll always play depending on the type of shot. So I'll almost always, <laughs> and, and they'll be different from the range of the course. So I'll almost always warm up with a swing feeling that matches my reroute drill that I do. But when I go and play golf on the course, I like to feel the other feeling because it feels more anti-left. So I can take more on with my irons. My old driver last year and I absolutely loved it. I felt like I couldn't hit it left. It felt very difficult because I, I love when I feel, because I move the handle a lot. I like that, you know, yeah. I was pretty good as a kid, yeah. I started four though, I mean. Right. Yeah. So you had all, you had all the instinct for it early on? Yeah, obviously I quite enjoy, I was quite competitive and you know, I think that's more important. You've got to be, you've yeah. got to enjoy competing, you know what I mean? I think, the more, the older I get, the more I think about it. You've got to not be put off by those butterflies. And, mm. Yeah, my brother was good, but he, He'd be sick going to a golf tournament because he was more nervous, and that's going to put you off. There's going to come a time where you'd be like, I'll go to the dentist. That's how I feel when I, go to, I don't go to the dentist. Because <laughs> I, I fucking have bad memories of the dentist. I never really had that with golf. You know, I just, I when I get on the course, I like, I, you know, I, I, I like getting into the golf and, Relish you know, the challenge. Yeah. yeah, off the course, I'm not much of it. I don't care, take or leave it. But mm. when I'm actually getting out there, I, you know, I do quite enjoy it. I'm quite competitive, I think, in that sense.